Okay, uh, we have one more that we're going to look at. Okay, so this one, uh, we have two things on top and bottom that both look like they can be factored. Definitely you want to factor this one first. So we want to make sure that we, we factor it because there might be something you could cancel out top and bottom. Now for the top one, I'm going to do this one by trial and error. So we know that the 3x and x are going to be inside here. And then for 8, we can try 1 and 8 or 2 and 4. I'll start with 2 and 4 and see if that works. I want to get a minus 10 in there. So 3x times 4 is positive 12 and a 2 here. So if I make this negative and this one positive, I'll get negative 12 plus 2. That will give me negative 10 there uh, in, for the middle term. The bottom one is your difference of square. So x plus 4, x minus 4. What we notice here is there's an x minus 4 factor that's going to cancel out from top and bottom. So I know that I can cancel that out, which means that I can simplify my answer down to this. So the simplified answer, that's the one that you want to do when you do this information here. However, the 4 that cancels out, you don't want to forget about that one. Anytime you have a factor that cancels from the top and the bottom, what you get is something that's called a hole. A hole would be something like this where the graph goes, you have an open circle and it keeps on continuing after that. The hole would be basically, it's, it's going to occur at whatever x value makes this part zero, the part that you cancel out. So in this case, when I did that, uh, a four would make the bottom part zero. So I'm going to put up here that there's a hole at x equals four. There's a hole that's missing there um, because again, if I, the reason why that, that four cannot be included is because if I put four back into the original equation, I'm dividing by zero. So I know that at four, that, that point cannot exist in my graph. Now the graph itself is going to look exactly like this one. However, all I'll do is when I'm at four, I'm just going to go ahead and put an open circle in and we'll see that a little bit later when we do the graph. Okay, so now once we talked about that, now we're going to go ahead and answer uh, these. So x-intercept, x-intercept, you're going to set the top equal to zero. 3x plus two equals zero. If you solve for that, you're going to get negative two-thirds. So negative two-thirds is your x-intercept. Next, we want to find the y-intercept is where you put in a zero for the x. Okay, so I can use the original one or this one, it doesn't matter. Uh, and that, Actually, uh, no, I want to use this one. So again, uh, always use the original one for that. I'm going to put in three times zero plus two, and I have zero plus four. That gives us one-half. So we use the reduced version, it's easier to put in. We get one half for the y-intercept. So always use your reduced one, especially when you're finding your asymptotes and x-intercept, you must make sure that you use the reduced one. So I want to use the reduced one for the vertical asymptotes, so for the VA, I'm going to, I'm going to set x plus 4 equal to 0, and I get x is equal to negative 4. I want to make sure again, you have to put the x equals as part of your answer. Don't forget to put that in there because otherwise you don't have an equation of a line, it's going to be marked wrong. So x is equal to negative 4. For your horizontal, your horizontal, you're going to look at the different rules that we have going on there. The highest power on top is the same as the highest power on the bottom. That would be this situation, your n equals m, highest power on top is n, highest power on the bottom is, is m, they're equal to each other. When that happens, you're going to divide the numbers that come in front of the x squares. So the numbers that, those leading coefficients, those are the ones that you're dividing. So in this case, I have three divided by one. So therefore, y equals three is gonna be the equation for my horizontal asymptote. So this time I only have one vertical and I have one horizontal. I'm ready now to draw the graph. So again, I'm use, this is basically the graph I'm, I'm gonna be looking at. That's the information that we found. So now we'll put all this together onto a graph. So first we want to set it up with our correct intercepts and our asymptotes. Our intercept, I have x is equal to negative two-thirds, which is going to be about right there. The y-intercept is going to be at positive one-half, so it'll cross through uh, right there. I have a vertical asymptote at negative four, so here's my vertical asymptote. My horizontal one is going to be at three. So it's going to look like this. So this is the whole entire graph that's set up. Now, um, I noticed that I have two points right here. So if I'm picking whether the graph is above or if it's going to be below, 
it has to be down here because that's where my two points are at. So that tells me for sure the graph needs to be drawn down in this section. So I, I'll follow the, the vertical one, it'll hit the two points, it'll follow the horizontal one like that, that's what your first part of the graph is going to look like. Now for the part that's going to be over here, the graph will either be above or it's going to be below. I can't have it drawn below because again if I, if I have the graph drawn this way, that means it would have to cross the x-axis and I'd have to have another point here, but I only found one of them. It only crosses the y-axis at this point only, which means that the other part must be drawn above here. So the other part is going to be drawn above. It'll follow that, that vertical, it'll curve, and follow along that one. Now, originally I said that before there's a hole at x equals 4. So this graph is not technically correct yet because I haven't accounted for that hole. So what you do is at, at 4, you're going to go up to the graph and at that point, you're just going to go ahead and draw in an open circle. So at the x value of 4, there's an open circle right there and that means that that original 4 is not included. The graph itself looks like the simplified one that I erased, basically the one without the x minus 4 is there. It's going to look like that graph. That's why we only have one vertical asymptote but not two. But we have to account for that extra one that we canceled out, so that's why you have an open circle. And that'll happen again. Anytime you cancel a term out from top and bottom, that's where you end up having a hole.